Blog Talk Radio. Today's sponsor is Audible.com, a leading provider of spoken audio entertainment and information. Listen to audiobooks wherever and whenever you want. Get a free book when you sign up for a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash Scott's Books. Welcome to Scott Cluthy's Positively Incorrect, live on Blog Talk Radio. The call-in line is 347-308-8478. And now, Scott Cluthy and Positively Incorrect. Hello and good evening on this Tuesday evening live across America and around the world. It's time for another edition of Positively Incorrect. Incorrect with your host, Scott Cluthy, and I have such an enormously powerful guest in the first part of the show. Now, later, because of my first guest, Dr. Jamie Turndorf, Dr. Dr. Love for millions and millions of people worldwide, I'm repeating a show I did with Echo Bodine called uh, What Happens When We Die. So that'll be on in about 35 minutes if you haven't heard that. It's a great show. In the meantime, it's a great honor to welcome to the show, and this is the first time in all these years that I've been able to work live with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. Uh, Dr. Love, welcome to Positively Incorrect. Oh, I'm so thrilled to be with you. Well, your Love. work is, <laughs> your new work, Dr. Turndorf, is, is right in my sweet spot because I am all about supporting people in connecting with uh, the greater self with the truth of the reality of spirit above matter and all these things and everything I do in one shape or form or another over the decades. So it's a real honor because Dr. Turndorf has been known for so many years as Dr. Love, radio and TV personality. She's been delighting audiences for three decades with her professional expertise, spicy humor, nothing wrong with that. And her success is largely due to her remarkable ability to turn clinical psychobabble into entertaining and easy-to-understand concepts that transform lives. Now, she's authored lots of books, and you've probably read some of them. Uh, Hay House is publishing her latest two books, Kiss Your Fights Goodbye, Dr. Love's Ten Simple Steps to Cooling Conflict and Rekindling Your Relationship, and the one we're talking about tonight that just came out uh, in August. It's funny to say last month, (laughs) two days ago. Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the deceased, and it introduces her new grief therapy method that brings her acclaimed conflict resolution method to the world of after-death communication. And that probably, I know, uh, Dr. Turndorf, that set some people back on their heels, or you were concerned that it might set people back on the heels. But the truth is, the love of your life for so many years, uh, Dr. Gene Penn, set you back on your heels, and in fact, you even had premonitions of him, of his coming to you from an early, early age with your daddy talking about Poughkeepsie, New York, in the car. I know about mm-hmm. that. And mm-hmm. you, <laughs> you also have opened up to and now strongly uh, advocate for our intuitive abilities and our ability to connect with that which is unseen but not unheard or unspoken or unmoved in our hearts. When we are Mm -hmm. open to those who have ears to hear and eyes to see. So, uh, great honor to have you on the show tonight, Jamie. I'm so glad to be here. You know, the thing is, what's so amazing is, it's true what you said, that when I was a young girl, I had a premonition of the man that I would one day marry. So, I literally waited for him to appear. appear. I was sort of like Rapunzel, you know, in my little castle, and I just waited for him to appear, and he did appear on the first day of my freshman year at Vassar College. I'd been shut out of all the intro sociology classes, and the secretary said, go ask the department chair, Jean Pin, if he could find a seat for you in one of the closed classes. The minute I walked into his office, I had the first and only out-of-body experience I had ever had in my life. I felt my soul shooting at high speed through a tunnel to the end of my life, and then it shoots back into my body, and I get this message. Remember, every aspect of the meeting, he's going to be everything to you one day. I mean, that's just your average day on the farm, right? So Just now, a typical, typical uh, meeting with a professor. Your first day. First trying to get day into a new class. College. Right. right. So <laughs> he, he, 
I mean, it's crazy. Now, I didn't even know at the time. I, I just sort of got the message and then forgot it. Then in my senior year, I needed help with the statistical portion of my thesis, and I knew that Jean had been a statistician. Well, actually, I found out that Jean had been one of the most famous Jesuit priests in history. For most of his life, he taught at the Vatican. Can you imagine? A he remarkable spoke, you know, background. A remarkable career. He he spoke ten languages. He had ten doctoral degrees, a doctor of letters from the Sorbonne, and here he is, um, a radical feminist Jesuit priest who founded a movement called Liberation Theology designed to fight church oppression from within. He didn't want to see women trapped in marriages where they were being abused. So he he fought the Pope and the Catholic Church because they were trying to block the legalization of divorce. And he fought and won on the grounds of religious freedom. But out of the private sector, and he got the divorce bill passed, changed the course of history, and eventually left the Jesuit order and the priesthood, and he's recruited by Vassar. So here he is, this you know devoutly spiritual guy. Meanwhile, I was raised by two devoutly atheist parents. <laughs> <laughs> taught me not to believe in God or the afterlife or anything, right? He and I never right. discussed religion. We didn't talk about the Bible. We just just were crazy for each other. We started working on my thesis, and within a few weeks, we knew. And we were together from that moment on for 27 years, absolutely crazy for each other, just so passionate, writing books together, restoring houses together, until the last year of his life where we both started having a premonition that he was going to die of an accident. We just didn't know when or where. Or where. Mm -hmm. Or where. So on the day we left for our vacation to Italy, I had a very bad feeling because I saw about 50 crows in the backyard, and also I saw that the lightning had come and struck our rose arbor and destroyed it. But we went all the same. And we traveled to Sperlonga, this beautiful medieval village, high over the rocky cliffs, looking down over this lovely bay, like a mini bay of Naples. And we're sitting on the beach, and he gets stung by a bee. And I watch him die in front of my eyes. I tell the whole story in Love Never Dies. But here's the most significant part. After he dies of the bee sting... I go back to the, the hotel room, and I'm alone, lying on the bed, hysterically crying and shaking and trembling. And the next thing I know, Scott, I feel his hand stroke the entire length of my spine. And I know what I felt. I sit up. I look over my shoulder. I, I know I felt him. But, of course, he's not there physically, but he's there. And this was just the beginning of his amazing manifestations. And in the first part of Love Never Dies, I tell how he makes his presence known and continues to. And it is so wild. He's doing this. He's gone over the top because he wants me, because I have a platform and I'm known and I'm a respected you know, therapist, I'm such a believable spokesperson, not just because I'm a respected shrink, but also I was an atheist. He wants me to tell our story because he wants the world to know that what we've been told about the afterlife is dead wrong. And specifically, well, here's the thing. I'll just take a little aside to let you know because this is how I put it all together. The first night I came back from Italy, and again, I, it's been three days, and I'm not sleeping, and I'm crying, and I'm a wreck. And I'm lying in my bed, and suddenly I hear Jean speak to me. And I know he's quoting a passage. I just don't know what it is. So the next day, I go to meet with his priest in order to go over the readings for his funeral. And I say to the priest, you know, my husband is speaking to me from spirit. So the priest lifts his brow in obvious skepticism, like, yeah, right. But then I tell him what Jean said. The priest goes white. He crosses himself. He says, dear Lord, Jamie, at first I did not believe you, but I do now. You are quoting an obscure biblical passage from the communion of saints, like I would know, 
I didn't know. I, I never <laughs> read the Bible. We didn't discuss religion. I'm like, huh? You could have killed. You know, I could have had okay. a V8. I didn't you know, right? So, <laughs> so I priest. tell him this whole thing. The priest is freaked that I'm, te- and he knows that I. He he's just meeting me for the first time, and he he knows that I know nothing. So it took me a year to understand why Jean quoted this passage to me, because he was a religious pioneer in life. He continues to be in the afterlife. The communion of saints, as I discovered, says that our loved ones in spirit are one with or in communion with God and the saints. And since we're supposed to stay in communion and communication with God and the saints, this means we are supposed to stay in communication and communion with our loved ones in spirit because they're one with God and the saints. And he was giving me this message to tell me there is a biblical foundation for reconnecting and staying connected and that what we've been told about the afterlife is dead wrong. Heaven is a state, not a place. Heaven is here and now. Heaven is all around us. And that we are not meant to live in an emotional wasteland, disconnected from those we love, waiting till we die so we can reunite with them in heaven. That was his point. And so as a result, I realized I must create a new grief therapy method that shows the world how to reconnect rather than say goodbye, because, you know, the traditional Western approach to grief exactly. is grieve, let go, and move on, and you better do it in six months, because if you're not done in six months, something's wrong, and we've got to call you um, mentally ill, you've got complicated grief syndrome, we need to get put a label on you, we've got to give you drugs. This is all ridiculous. So what I realized is the Western approach to grief leaves the bereaved at an even greater loss. So my method, which I just named last week, and the story of how the name came from my method is amazing. If we have time, I'll tell you. But I'm calling it trans-dimensional grief therapy. So I show you how to reconnect, but now here's the second piece. This is so amazing. I discovered that sometimes you have to actually wait until somebody has died in order to make peace with that person. And I can't think of a soul alive who doesn't harbor some unfinished business with somebody who's passed. So I not only show you how to reconnect, I show you using my technique called dialoguing with the departed how to make peace with the deceased. So that's it in a nutshell. Now, that that is, uh, you've spoken volumes in a lifetime's worth of work. Dr. Jamie Turndorf, Dr. Love, my guest this evening live. If you have a question or comment for Dr. Turndorf, the call-in line is always the same. It's 347-308-8478 here on Positively Incorrect with your host, Scott Cluthie, and we'll take, try and take a few calls a little later in the program. Now, it, you know, it, what's also really powerful about your story, and I think it relates mm-hmm. to the importance of the tools of relationship uh, that you give people, Dr. Turndorf, is that right. your 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 husband Jean Pen also guided you to a new relationship? He didn't say, "Oh, well, now you need to worship me. I'm not there. You have to, you know, we are. Yes, you have your love, but you are also a human being. You are being human, and he guided you to a new partner. He did. He did. What do you did know that I don't to- know? To a website? <laughs> he hasn't come yet. I, I'm open. I'm taking, you know, applications. Oh, I thought but that he I, sent I you. I haven't. No, I haven't. No, not yet. Oh, no. I, thought, I mean, I'm sorry. I was reading I, where here. Where did you get that, that had, idea? Maybe you're seeing into the future here. I thought he went to a computer screen and you wrote to someone and they. Oh, said, I don't you did. Yes, but here's the cool thing. I didn't thing, get to finish. Scott. <laughs> you didn't get because the book just came in today, so you didn't get to go past that point. But that's not what happened. What happened was, well, I'm just going to reveal the secret now. What the heck? So, right before we left for Italy, I'm lying on his shoulder, and he says in his adorable French accent, "Jamie, I'm not going to be able to keep my word and be very old and die with you." And I said, "I know, Jean, you're going to die of an accident." And he said, I know. So I said, well, I'm going to be alone. (laughs) 
I'm going to be alone the rest of my life because you're it for me. So he said, no, you won't. I'm going to send you my clone. So I said, oh. clone? <laughs> there is no clone of you. What do you mean clone? Well, well Scott, you got to read the book as I explain how I, in my limited human mind, misunderstood that you got to the part in the story where he sent me this guy and I thought, oh, he must be the clone that he meant. And what I discovered is that he was a temporary clone that okay. in spirit form, our loved ones freed from the vessel of their bodies can send us any number of temporary clones. They're able to put their spiritual energy into anyone who's open enough to be in the service of love, right? An animal, a baby, a man who's particularly open. So that guy was a temporary clone. And that was okay, but happened. I think what's beautiful, though, Gene, uh, is, is that, uh, Jamie, is that he guided you to open yourself to new relationship. That's the mm-hmm. thing. That, you know, the not to is, dwell in the past. He, but to we move love, into the we that's love. The you know, a lot of people say, Jamie, you know, your method, you're encouraging people to not say goodbye. Well, don't we have to move on? Don't we have to stop loving? But that's like saying to a mother, well, you've had <laughs> one child, so how can you have another? How could you love another? You know, our hearts have room to love so many, right? Right. You haven't known Italian so, moms then. <laughs> oh, yeah, with my my Antony, my firstborn, my Antony. I can't love anybody but Antony. No, but <laughs> Right. <laughs> no, we have room to love. And the thing is, as he said to me, this is so amazing. Oh, I'm walking around and I'm grieving, and people keep saying to me, you're glowing, Jamie, you're glowing. And so I sat down and I asked him one night, why am I glowing? And he said, we're newlyweds in the new spiritual phase of our relationship. That's what he said. So I was getting, okay, there are different forms of relationship. This is a spiritual phase. So that doesn't prevent me from having, you know, other forms of relationship. Now what's wild is that night an email came in from a man that I did not know. He was disabled, and he had written to me many months, maybe like, no, this was like a month before, it was right after Jean had left his body, and he had seen an endorsement that I put on a website for a mattress, and the guy writes to me, and he says, you know, did you really like the mattress? And I wrote the guy back, and I said, yes, I did, but I really can't speak to you because my husband just died, and I'm in a mess. So on this night, you know, the night where he said we're newlyweds in the new spiritual phase of our relationship, I see an email coming in from this same guy. And he says to me in the email, I thought you would like to see a picture of my beloved little bird, Jamie. So I thought, well, this was already wild enough because my husband and I loved birds. We had a bird. The bird wasn't named Jamie. It was named Fluffy. But the guy, the fact that he said this was already amazing enough. So I open up the attachment and I see there's a bird. But what was incredible was there was a second attachment. And I open this attachment up and what do you think? I see. It's a picture of the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. Well, where did Jean and I go on our honeymoon when we were newlyweds? Paris. And what what did our hotel room overlook? The Arc de Triomphe. So I was so blown away by this that he used this man to, I don't even know. I wrote him back and I said, you said that you sent me a picture of a bird, but do you know why you sent me this picture? of Paris and the Arc de Triomphe, and I never heard back from the guy, which made me wonder if it was just an angel. I mean, you know? It was a delivery service. It was the the, uh, Pony Express. (laughs) Exactly. I mean, wait till you read the stories in Love Never Dies, you know? I mean, it's so crazy, and I'm doing a radio show now on Hay House called Love Never Dies, and the people are pouring in with calls. Oh, my gosh. You know, Things are happening to us. We thought we were nuts. We were imagining things. But now that we're listening to you revealing this, you know, and coming out and saying it, we realize the same things are happening to us. Our loved ones are reaching out to us all over the place, letting us know they're still here. But so many people will say to me at first, well, you know, this doesn't happen to me. And I say, oh, it does. You're just, you don't believe it can happen because the traditional Christian view is, 
you can't hear from them, they're in heaven, forget it, right? But then when I say to you, but that's not true, and these are the signs, then people will say, oh, well, that did happen, and so did this, and so did that, and then they open the door, too. Yes, absolutely. My guest, Dr. Jamie Turndor, for her new book, Love Never Dies, from Hay House, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased. You know, I think uh, this new model for the the grief therapy that you're bringing out yes. is so important. Yes. We'll do another show and really go into all the steps, okay, because our time is flying. I would love to. You know, uh, it's great to would. speak to you about this because you get it. You know, you get it. Yeah, I get it. Uh, and, and But one thing I'd like you to address, because the book is so much about you and Jean Pan, and I think pe- uh, people might be skewered toward, oh, that's just about like if you've been married. you have. Let's talk about no. the grief process for those of loved ones in our family or animals that we've loved right. or even uh, relatives that, you know, my late grandfather was a magnificent man, but it's been so long. You know, my parents died when I was relatively young, only in my, like, 2021. 20, so right. let's talk about people connecting with those they love or those they feel uh, may not be with them long and not getting to that, that sadness. You know, I don't want people to fall into their darkness about this. And that's why I think your work is so, so fantastic. Okay, so first of all, I, I've had, there are many examples that I give in Love Never Dies where I show how in the third part of Love Never Dies, I show how my patients, people have come to me in my office, I've helped them to reconnect with their siblings, parents, children. I mean, just, this is an amazing story. A woman came to see me. She was a formerly devout Catholic who was now furious with God, lapsed Catholic because her daughter died in a car crash, right? So this mother is so filled with grief. It's like seven years later, and she's furious. So I say to her, listen, if you would just reconnect with your daughter and form a new relationship, a spiritual relationship, I promise you, your sadness and your anger will vaporize. So the mother says, I don't believe it. I don't believe there's a God. I don't believe in heaven. Well, at this moment, her daughter comes through. And the way she comes through is she's showing me her teeth. It's so bizarre, the picture in my mind of these perfect, white, even teeth. So I say to the mother, listen, um, your daughter is showing herself right now. And she's showing me perfect white teeth. The mother bursts into tears and she says to me, are you kidding me? In life, my daughter had black teeth and they were crooked. And it was the one feature she was ashamed of that she always wanted to fix. So there it is, right? She's showing us. She's not only here, but she's proving in her spirit body she's fixed. Now, you would think that this amazing manifestation would have been enough for the mom to just start to reconnect, right? But no. The next week she comes back, and she's still hurt, and she's still angry, and she's still bitter. Well, now the daughter says, tell her about Padre Pio. I don't even know who Padre Pio is, remember? I'm the perfect pagan. So I say <laughs> to, <laughs> so I say to her, uh, excuse me, she asked me to mention Padre Pio. So the mother says, she's sitting on my couch. She looks like she's shot out of a cannon, lands in the middle of the room, and she says, why did you say Padre Pio? I said, well, your daughter asked me to. And she says to me, he was her favorite saint. She talked about him morning, noon, and night. And the mother now weeps, and she says, I feel her. She reconnected with her and then went on to heal. She opened herself up through through the daughter uh, bringing you as the agent of change, and then she yeah. allowed her feeling, true feeling, spiritual nature to yes. be present again. Yes, yes, and yes. I have so many examples of this. And a little girl, you asked about animals. A little girl came into my office crying. She said, my doggy died last night. So at that moment, I see a little yellow dog, and I say, was your doggy yellow? And she says, no. So I'm thinking, okay, you're really slipping here, you know. But the next thing I see is another dog. Now, this dog just keeps showing me its two front paws, perfect, big, 
huge, like big, round puppy paws, and it's proudly showing me this. So I say, listen, I see another doggy now, and this doggy is showing me perfect, perfect big front paws. Now she starts to cry, and she says, you won't believe it. The doggy who died last night didn't have any front paws. Mm. Is that oh, the sweetest yeah. thing? So he was saying, look, look, I'm here, I'm here, and I'm fixed. I have my paws. And P.S., the yellow totally dog was the dog who complete. died before. Yeah. Isn't that sweet? We are brought to wholeness. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, and I mean, it's so many stories like this that are just so wow. incredible. And people, you know, people say, oh, my gosh, I, I thought I was crazy. I thought I was imagining things. But when I show you step by step how to recognize every sign because I detail all the signs, right? Oh, well, this happened. I was in France talking to a woman. Oh, I'm Catholic. We're told that we don't, they're in heaven. We can't hear from them. And I said, oh, yeah? And then I start clicking off the signs. And then she takes me by the hand from room to room. Oh, he did this. He did that. He did this. this. That's beautiful. It's so wonderful. That's beautiful. I want yeah. to see if uh, a very patient caller here on the line see from a it looks like uh, maybe an internet call maybe Canada one 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 of those oh, calls. Great. I never know who that is, but who's this on the line this evening on Positively Incorrect? It's Deanna. How are you? Deanna, good evening. How are you? Well, uh, I didn't know I was coming through as one 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 until I realized <laughs> that I was. Your number one fan, is that's why, Deanna. Definitely. Uh, you always have something interesting to say. I always learn, so how could I not be, you know? <laughs> You're on with you Dr. Open the door to, you, you open the door to blog talk for me, so, you know, thank you for that, Scott. Uh, Jamie, very interesting what you were talking about. Um, I, I've been reading since Moody's book came out so many years ago, things like this, and it's always fascinated me. I don't know what else to say or what to ask. Oh, to it's just nice to hear from you. Raymond Moody loves my book. He's going to endorse it. So that's that's oh, really? a little connection. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's great. I haven't talked to him yeah. yet. Yeah. And you, you sound lovely, Diana. Well, Diana, it's great to have you out there. Are you in good health? Um, I'm safe for this month. That will good. improve my health. Okay, Definitely. good. Well, blessings to you. Well, okay. I will say a, a prayer to my husband. Merci, merci, je vous en prie pour ça. Ah, merci à vous. <laughs> Thank you so much and happy we anniversary. We have the French Scott. connection. We Thank you, Deanna. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. There you go. All right, I'll put you back on hold. You can listen to these for more. Yeah, yes, I just uh, great people uh, out there, and always a great service to bring people of your caliber, Dr. Jamie Turndorf. And I want to make sure people know uh, how to connect with you. The new book is out from Hay House, Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased, and some of the great things you have available for people to go and, and remodel their grieving therapy process, Dr. Turner. What a wonderful way of saying it. Yeah, so come visit me at askdrlove, A-S-K-D-R-love.com or drlove.com. And right on the upper right-hand side of my homepage, you'll see an opt-in that says Join the Love Revolution. And if you just sign up for my newsletter, you'll immediately get the preface and the intro of Love Never Dies. And then if you buy the book on Barnes & Noble or Amazon, you'll see on my homepage there's a red box. There's now a Love Never Dies sweepstakes. Hay House says everybody loves uh, a free gift. So if you buy now because the book just published this week, you'll be entered yeah. into my sweepstakes. And uh, what else can I say? Listen on uh, Hay House Radio, Love Never Dies, Tuesdays noon Eastern time, and I'm taking live calls there. And just, you know, come to the site and you'll find out everything you need to know. But the, the most important thing is just, just you know, they used to say in the Time Life book series, read the book because it will just completely transform how you feel about grief. It will make you realize that your relationships don't end. They just transition into a new format so you'll be able to say hello, not goodbye, and also have a vehicle for making peace. Dr. Jamie Turndorf, Dr. Love, Love Never Dies, and it's uh, very appreciative of you being on with us tonight. 
live, Dr. Uh, Dr. Turndorf, and look forward to the, joining you again in the future, okay? I would love to. You are a very special, special person, <laughs> very deeply, deeply moved by how open you are. Thank you. Uh, I'm grateful for those gifts so that I can share with others. We'll talk to you again in the future, and folks, do stay with me. Echo Bodine, What Happens When We Die? That interview coming up right after these reminders about the good folks who make this show possible. That would be me. <laughs> You're listening to Scott Cluthy's Positively Incorrect Radio. Join the newsletter at scottcluthy.com and on Facebook at Scott Cluthy's Positively Incorrect TV and Radio. Want to talk to tonight's guest? Call in at 347-308-8478. We'll be right back. Scott Cluthy's Positively Incorrect Radio is excited to share our new sponsor with you, Audible.com, a leading provider of spoken digital audio entertainment and information. They have well over 150,000 titles to choose from, and you can listen to them on any device, including whatever you're hearing us on right now. And if you sign up at our URL, which is audibletrial.com forward slash Scott's Books, you get one free audio book and one month free trial of the service. Great books like Dreamweaver by Gary Wright, Knock 'em Dead Social Networking by Martin Yate, or any of the best selling books by the best selling authors I have on the show all the time. So that's right, go to audibletrial.com forward slash Scott's Books and support Positively Incorrect Radio and support yourself with the greatest books in the universe. Remember, that's a free book and a free one-month trial at audibletrial.com forward slash scottsbooks. Soulgrowth.org is the online portal for all spiritual paths. It is packed with great wisdom and many tools to inspire all of us on our spiritual journeys, like the Zen Kitchen and One Minute Epiphanies, And you can help others while helping yourself at no cost as a soul growth mentor. Also, go now to MuseList.org so you can receive the Soul Growth Muse letter and run your own free classified ads for the spiritually aware. Hello, your host Scott Cluthy for Positively Incorrect. Hope you're enjoying the show tonight. Have you ever thought about hosting your own radio show? Well, make me your broadcast coach. I'll share 25 years of knowledge and insight, help you create your show, the sound, the theme, every aspect of your program, and help you get launched here on Blog Talk Radio or some other network of your choice. Go to scottcluthy.com and check the Your Broadcast Coach tab and start your professional broadcasting career today. This is Positively Incorrect Radio with your host, Scott Cluthy. Call in for tonight's guest at 347-308-8478 and join the newsletter at scottcluthy.com. And look for Scott Cluthy's Positively Incorrect TV and radio on Facebook. Now back to Positively Incorrect with Scott Cluthy. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Scott Cluthy's Positively Incorrect, live on Blog Talk Radio. The call-in line is 347-308-8478. And now, Scott Cluthy and Positively Incorrect. Yes, it's live on a Tuesday afternoon, a little earlier than usual, and hopefully the electronic gods and goddesses allow us to go forward with a great interview today. Your host, Scott Cluthy, live on Positively Incorrect, a special time, because I have a special guest. It's Echo Ooh. Bodine. Echo, hi there. Can you hear me now? Scott, I can hear you now. Yes. Yay. It's, a it's happening. <laughs> I've got the can you hear me now? I can hear you just so special. That's wonderful. Oh, <laughs> uh, just so um, special. It is special. Uh, Echo Bodine is very special. Best-selling author of Echoes of the Soul, The Gift, A Still Small Voice, and most recently, What Happens When We Die, the brand-new brand book we're talking about today, A Psychic's Exploration of Death 
Heaven and Soul's Journey After Death. Of course, she's a renowned spiritual healer, psychic, and teacher, and all those other books I described are all coming down the line from folks in the past. And she also hosts a bi-monthly online show, Sisters for the Soul. And, of That's course, right. EchoBoteen.com. She's got her popular blog there, but so much more. So, Echo, uh, tremendous to have you joining us. And I do have callers calling in. The call-in line is always here on Positively Incorrect, especially this special live fr- uh, early afternoon edition, 347 308 8478, great to have you out there. And, of course, we'll take your questions and calls for Echo a little later in the show. But let's talk about what happens when we die. You know, a lot of people, Echo, would assume that all your years, decades of work, and, and you know, I've known you for decades probably, um, mm-hmm. that, that you would have uh, spoken about or shared all these things. But this is really really bringing all together sort of a very, a very specific focus, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes. The whole focus of the book is death. Mm-hmm. From, from you know, the soul's perspective, from the human perspective, because there's, you know, Scott, I've just found that there's so many misconceptions about death. And, uh, and where do we get those? Well, <clears throat> I'm sorry to say we get a lot of them from religion. And, um, you know, I know religion does what they can to comfort people when someone that we love dies. But... A lot of people just aren't getting, aren't feeling comforted by it. So, just the really cool things that I've learned from the souls that I've worked with from people who have gone through their, <clears throat> excuse me, their dying process. Um, it's like, oh, I've learned so many cool things that I want to share them, and that's yeah. what yeah. that's what started this whole project. You know, it. it um, I think one of the great things about the book. To echo though is for your many fans and the people who pick it up or want to find out what happens when we die, which is by mm-hmm. the way from one of the great imprints for this whole this whole spiritual community. I'm so grateful to work with them for so long. New World Library, great uh, yes. people to handling your work and Kim and all that. Yep. Um, but I think one of the for me. Uh, that always came from what's a soul. You know, I was like a bit of a soul man, if you will. I mean, Alice Bailey was the first stuff I ever read, believe it or not. And then I got a teacher who taught Alice Bailey, believe it or not, a whole school called Sound, Color, and Vibration. So I've always come from kind of the soul, uh, you know, what's the sur- the soul's sor- sojourn through this life? How are we that a soul has a body that us? But so I think the whole, all the information you share about the soul is important for people to make some distinctions. That when they say, "Oh no, I'm going to die," and then there's no more me. No, it, your soul's having this journey. You're the personality that the soul's using to have this journey. But that's what it is. It's a personality model that the soul absorbs and experiences into. But the soul is the part that continues. I think that's really important to reiterate, especially for younger people or people who just are maybe awakening for the first time that maybe everything I learned in Sunday school is not exactly the way things go down. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Okay, so, now, Scott, you're going <clears throat> in and out a lot. So I am? Yeah, so I think I'm getting mm, maybe half of what you're saying. Oh, blog Talk Radio, yeah, I'm loving you. See, this has happened before. <laughs> well, I just thought I'd let you know, sweetie, just in case I'm not responding correctly, it's it, it, uh, my brain is trying to fill in the words that you might be saying. Right. Well, I'm, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to ask one of the folks online out there if they can hear either of us. Or okay, both good of idea. Just kind of verify. Good idea. Uh, I have folks online from a 705 area code. Who's this? Hello, I'm Marsha. Marcia, can you hear us or not hear me or hear both of us? Or I actually can hear you both wonderfully. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's good. That's good news, Marcia. I'm going to put you back on hold, and I will bring you back to talk to Echo in a little bit, okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. See, I love... Now, there's a sweet soul, Marcia, helping us out. Yeah, um, that was really nice. That was very good. nice. Very nice. My little test guinea pig, if you will. Um, <laughs> but the, 
piece, the piece is echo about all the information about the soul. The people really need to edu- be educated about the fact that they are a soul and what the soul's yes. purpose is in this life. Yes. I totally agree, Scott. Totally agree. So so that's kind of thematically a lot of it. Now, I have been working with the uh, hospice community a lot lately. And, oh, good. Uh, yeah, and I've been working with... Uh, uh, Laura Wayman, known as the Dementia Whisperer, about dementia. Uh, so it's okay. giving me a lot of understanding from the medical scientific perspective on dementia and then mm-hmm. folding that into your information about the end times for someone passing. Of course, I've experienced it that myself with my, my late departed uh, okay. in hospice for weeks. And, and okay. know those Yeah, I know those experiences firsthand from over 12 years ago. And so it's a, I kind of come at it from a, another whole other layer. Uh, but people, there's a lot of important information in here for people to understand the process of dying. Yes, yes. The stages yes. of dying. Yes. Talk about that. <laughs> yes, there are pages and pages about dying and and what the soul goes through. Because, you know, I mean, I'm glad you said that. I like the description of the soul being the personality because you know people do feel you know okay people say to me a lot all right i know i have a soul at least that's what what religion teaches me but people feel so disconnected from it they have no idea well what is it and and how do i know i have one and and uh, you know it's like oh my gosh if they only understood that their personality, themselves, their essence, that is all their soul. And, you know, I mean, if you look at a person laying in a coffin, I always thought, I often think about this, you know, and how, okay, yeah, they're they're quiet, yes, they've got their eyes closed, but their Very whole quiet. essence is gone. And that's the soul, and that's that's the meat of us, the the real meat of us, what we're really all about. And so... You know, the thing about dying is, oh, boy, so many misconceptions. You know, one of, Scott, one of the biggest misconceptions I have found with people, even people in our community, is people think that when we die, we're just automatically happy. We're just happy. We're happy to go to heaven. All of our problems are gone. Um, all the problems are in the physical body, and that is just not the case, and um, I just talked to a psychic, a well-known psychic, a couple of weeks ago about this, and she was really surprised to read that um, we're not all happy when it's you know when it's our turn when we finally pass over. We're not happy, you know. We our souls go through a grieving process, and it's like people don't stop and think about that. You know, they think a lot of us think. As soon as, you know, our loved one passes away, oh, yippee-skippy, they get to be on the other side where it's all harps and angels, and we're stuck here in the muck. And <clears throat> it just it just isn't like that. Uh, our loved ones go through just as much of a, a process, a grief process, as we do. Uh, now, the good news is they can still see us from where they are on the other side, but even many of them, when they first go over, they are kept on that side because they're in so much deep grief, and they're not allowed to come back and start visiting their loved ones until there's more of a disconnect between them and us, and uh, one thing that always concerns me with the people that are grieving on this side is that they tend to really pull on their loved one, their deceased loved one, please come back, please be with me, please reassure me, give me a sign, give me a sign. And they're constantly focused on the deceased person and wanting them to come and take care of them, when in fact the grieving or the deceased is also in a grieving process. So we need to turn to the people here on earth to help us with our grief and they also need to turn to others on the other side to help them in their grief. <clears throat> and that isn't ever talked about. And that was one of the reasons why, another reason why I wanted to write the book was because 
I see I see people in deep grief and they're constantly pulling on their deceased loved one. And, you know, their deceased loved one, they have just let go of an entire life that they worked so hard to create. And and now, you know, now they're on the other side and people are saying, well, you need to let that go, especially for people who have a very quick death. Um, that can be uh, even more difficult for them because I've seen some people who have had a really quick death and they they think that they're dreaming. They don't really quite get what's going on uh, oftentimes for that first week and um, you know there's people from the other side that are talking to them but they still think that they're in a dream because it happened so fast and so for those of us on this side that really the nicest thing that we can do is encourage our loved ones to just find helpers on the other side to help them with their grief and then we will find people on this side to help us with ours. I don't even yeah. know if I answered your question. I just went into this whole thing. Are you still there, Scott? It was wonderful. My guest oh, is good. Echo Bodine. <laughs> and the new book is What Happens When We Die, A Psychic Exploration of Death, Heaven, and the Soul's Journey After Death from New World Library. You're listening to Positively Incorrect. Your host, Scott Cluthy, live on this Tuesday afternoon, 5 o'clock. I'm usually on 7 p.m. in the evening. It's great to have you all out there live and I do encourage your calls and questions for Echo Bodine. A little later in the show, I'll take those calls at 347-308-8478. Yes, it's been a hectic day. I have not opened up the chat box. I will. I have my apologies. I'm just multitasking like crazy here. Uh, but, uh, Echo, you know what? I, I think about what you were talking about, how that they're also sort of grieving for us in those relationships. They're being talked to on the other side by guides, elders, mm-hmm. relatives mm-hmm. communicated with, and they don't necessarily have, uh, unless the problem may be a very evolved person, if they, whatever, they don't have a real distinction. It's 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 literally like we talk about a veil. A veil's not very thick, really, you know? Right. If you're standing right. on the other side of a veil, someone's standing on the other side of a veil, literally a piece of cloth, a very thin mm-hmm. sheen, they're there. They're not not yeah. there. They're a person. Yeah, that's right. And if they're talking mm-hmm. to you through that veil, you hear it. And so mm-hmm. it's like a it's a it's like a sort of sensory overload for the soul, if you would, by have too much yeah, pool. That's so right. You're saying, oh, what was that, Henry? Henry, oh, come back to me. And Henry's there, like, oh, Martha, I want to come back to you. And over here, George, your uncle, who's up there with you, says, no, no, Henry, Henry, <laughs> guess what? Uh, yeah. She can't really yeah. hear you. Oh, no, she can. She's standing right there telling me to come back to her. No, no, really, she can't uh, hear you. It's designed mm-hmm. that way. So I'm going to stick around with her. And that can go on for a long time. And that can be people, uh, souls that just don't pass on for years. Yeah, yeah. You know, usually at some point there's an intervention of sorts from uh, the people on the other side. The family members, they'll come and say, come on, you know, and you've you've got to come with us. Yeah, remember gotta, me, I died. Remember, here I am. Hi, guess what? I, right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My uncle would do that. <laughs> hey, by the way, Scott, guess what? <laughs> Yo, dude. Yeah. Remember yes, the guy died years ago? Here we are. Yeah, here we are. <laughs> yep, our new home. Which, which I yep. say that facetiously, but I'm not because there's personality that the soul collects that personality and, and mm-hmm. kind of uses that as their sheath, don't they? they they're, they're dressed in clothing. They might, like you say, look a little younger I don't yes. know if that's a beauty makeover or not. But yeah, right. First thing that they, uh, yeah, they they pass the beauty makeover department first. Right. No, it's interesting how they all start to look younger right away. It is. It just is. Is that like it's, a thought form, like how I want to be perceived, or is that like something? I mean, it's, you know, that's a good question, Scott. Right. Because I, you know, I mean, there are some people. I, I don't think they really care what they look like, but, um, but. Pretty much everybody in heaven looks like they're in their 30s. But, you know, you can look in their eyes and you can see, oh, you know, look at all that wisdom in there. It's pretty cool. So that's how you can tell the older souls from the younger souls. The younger souls, their eyes are kind of vacant. You know, they haven't really developed much of a consciousness yet. So the older uh, the older, the older, souls have a, a wisdom in their eyes that's very nice. 
What brought you? Mm -hmm. I, I want to talk about your mom because okay. Uh, okay. you had a long process with your mom. So yeah. what was that part of what brought you toward this thematically echo, or is that just one of the really stories? I really wanted to share the personal side of it for you. Yeah, um, you know, Scott, when I started writing the book, Mom was doing fairly well. And, um, you know, and I would talk to her about, you know, what chapters do you think are, or what, what topics do you think are important for the book, Mom? And, well, honey, I think you should do this. I think you should write about that. And then, and I remember even saying to my mom, you know, Mom, I, I think I've finished the book, but I can't, I can't figure out what to, how to, how to wrap it all up. I said, it's like I can't write the last chapter. And uh, I said, I, I'm just stuck. I said, I sit down, I make myself write something, I end up throwing it away. And um, my publisher, you know, bless her heart, she was like, uh, Echo, the book was due six months ago. I'm like, I know, Georgia. Um, I, I can't, I can't finish it yet. And uh, so she was patient. She said, okay, all right, you know, try to get at it. And then... Um, Another month would go by, and, you know, Scott, the whole time I kept thinking, oh, man, I hope this doesn't have to do with mom dying. Um, and um, and then she died, and, uh, and I went through the whole process and went, oh, my God, of course this is the last chapter because I had gained so much compassion because when my dad died, it was very different. My dad was... A uh, very diff a difficult man, and so it wasn't the the deep grief like it was with mom. It was uh, almost a big sigh of relief, like okay, whew, you know, we got through that, and now dad hopefully is is doing better. And um, so I hadn't gone through. I've lost a lot of friends to alcoholism, and. Um, you know, I've, I've lost clients. I've gone through the dying process with a lot of people, but I hadn't ever gone through the loss that you know, experience I experienced with my mom, and that was something that, uh, oh my goodness, it's like wow, this one really smacked me between the eyes. And the other thing that's interesting too was, you know, mom and I, because she was also a psychic, and we we dealt with people and dying and, and communicating with the deceased. I know my sister and I and my other brother, or my brother, who's also psychic, my sister's psychic and uh, all of, we all are, um, we were all saying, you know, when she does go, we'll be able to communicate. This will be easy. You know, we'll get to see her all the time. We'll get to talk to her all the time. And it's just been absolutely the opposite. Um, she's been on the other side. She's been gaining energy um she stops by for really quick little visits she'll pop in my office and i uh, feel her presence in a very gentle almost like like a whisper of mom and then you know it's like mom are you here and then one word will come into my head of of whatever message she's trying to relay to me and then she's gone again and um so it's been very different than what we expected, but I'm very grateful. I mean, really, uh, I'm very grateful to her, uh, the timing of all of it, because I was able to write about it. I was able to learn about the little things, you know, um, and write about them in the book. The, you know, uh, you know, my dad's funeral was very, very simple, and uh, mom's was... She was just so loved by so many people, and so it was a big funeral, and, oh, just all the little things you go through, you know, even preparing for a funeral and dealing with people and their sadness and uh, and then the proper etiquette of everything. You know, you're supposed to send out thank you notes two weeks, within two weeks after the death. It's like, are you kidding me? I mean, I... I I was still walking into walls uh, two weeks after she died, and so I was like, "Okay, this is this is another good thing to know about to understand is that uh, you know, Scott. It was interesting. One a friend of mine, she when mom died, she gave me a hundred dollar gift certificate to one of our local grocery stores, and what you know what <laughs> that was the nicest thing anybody could have done because 
for those first, uh, probably the first couple of weeks, I didn't want to cook. I didn't want to have to think about meals. I didn't want to have no. to think about anything. I just wanted to, no. I just needed to be sad and get through the day and go to the grocery store and get something in the deli and come home and eat it, you know. And no. so, see, it's those kind of things that I learned about. And I'm so grateful that through Mom's death I was able to learn all those things. So, yeah, that's... I think yeah, that's the that's second good. to the last chapter. I ended up writing a conclusion at the end, but yeah, her death was a very positive experience for all of us. Very good. You know, that's um, just a clue to people. Uh, I went through nine months of two women passing away in my house at the same time. My mother-in-law. Had no mother-in-law. way, Scott. Way. Who? Yeah, two, and, and and crazy relatives calling and wondering what I was doing. You know, while I'm trying to figure out which foot goes in front of the other. And yep, so people yep. bringing, bringing food yeah. helped so much to not have to yeah. think about these things and uh, and afterwards as well. It was a great uh, a great gift. So instead of saying, oh, dear, oh, oh let's be, let's, let's get really miserable and great and no, do proactive. Uh, yeah. If you want to express yeah. your sadness, grief, and empathy, do something significant. Yeah. That's an action that will not be forgotten. This is Scott Cluthy, host and producer of Positively Incorrect Radio. I know how many choices you have and what media you choose, so thanks for listening as part of your journey to excellence and well-being in your life. I wanted to ask you to make one more step for me. Join my newsletter at scottcluthy.com. And if you will, like our Facebook page, Scott Cluthy's Positively Incorrect TV and Radio, Or join me on Twitter. Just enter JSC Media at Twitter. And by the way, would you like to host a radio program of your own? As a graduate of Coach U and a 30-year radio veteran, I can be your broadcast coach through every step to your first show. Call me, 713-665-3969, or email to jscmedia at sbcglobal.net. Or find out more at scottcluthy.com. Mm-hmm. My guest is Echo Bodine live on this Tuesday afternoon, special time for Positively and Correct, your host Scott Cluthy. Her new book, What Happens When We Die? A Psychic Exploration of Death, Heaven, and the Soul's Journey After Death from a New World Library. Yeah, Echo, we'll talk about that some time. We'll give you a call. Um, we have some wonderful callers on the line. The call in line, 347 308 8478. And uh, let's see what's on their mind. Take a call from uh, first from 705 area code. My brain is moving so fast trying to make sure their show's on the air. I forgot your name already. I know it begins with an M. Yeah. (laughs) Marsha. Marsha, you're so sweet to be out there, Marsha. You're on with Echo Bodine. Go ahead, please. Hello, Echo. Hi. Um, I've had. Lots of experience with uh, daily departed, many other things. And I was just, I'm not even sure what to ask. Uh, there's so much going on usually that uh, I'm I'm just leaving it to a spirit to or whoever to let me know what I need to know at this moment. If that makes sense. Um, you mean you're in overwhelm? Uh, no, no, not necessarily. It's, okay. It's, there's a lot of activity. Fall is, for me, a very, very um, busy, busy time. Okay. Okay. I, I've been dreaming since I was a little girl. Like uh-huh. Like little. Um, mm-hmm. So I have the gift of dreaming and all kinds of things, so... Fall usually for me, for whatever reason, it becomes very busy. Okay. So, honey, I, I guess I'm a little confused. Um, do you mean it, there's lots of spirits that visit you? Do you mean... Lots of spirits and, and dreaming and, yeah. Okay. I haven't really... Uh, I was listening to you talk, and I haven't uh, really connected with uh, a lot of... I've connected with some people, 
but I haven't uh-huh. really connected with a, a lot of people who um, who are well. Let's say authentic. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm not for lack of trying, but usually huh? it's like, oh, okay. So it was kind of like it when you picked my uh, number at the very start. Oh, okay. Sort of random. I'm not. Yeah. Not very. Uh, not a lot of connectivity. A lot of. Oh no 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 no! I just uh, that I. Make sense or what are you saying? No, that no, there was that a connectivity that there that was supposed okay. to happen because I also felt like there was other people on the line. And then are, are, are are these uh, this this energy is it coming to you or are you requesting it? I'm just curious. Uh no, they're they're around. Um. Do you want them to be around? Uh, pardon? Do you want them to be around? As long as they're, they're uh, of the light, they're welcome to be around. As long mm-hmm. as they're sent through uh, divine love, they can come around and I'm help. They just, with. I'm just kind of interested mm-hmm. in what the purpose is of wanting to... Because it can be very... I mean, Echo, you correct me if I'm wrong, but it's very disorienting to just start letting spirit be around all the time without purpose, without direction, without focus, without boundaries. And so it can be it can be like a like whoopee and then it can be like, can I have my own thoughts back now in my life? Mhm. Yeah. Like it would that. be very hard for me to yeah, have spirits around me all the time. Yep. <clears throat> so what is your question for Echo or your Uh I guess about my twin sister. She's in spirit. I see. What? I'm I'm sorry, you're going in and out again. I can't hear you. Her twin sister's in spirit. Can you connect with her twin sister? Oh, God. You know what? I No, I can't. Not right now. You know what? It takes me a while to really... Yeah. And, uh, oh, my gosh. And it also takes a lot of energy out of me to... Yeah. Uh, sit and try to communicate with the deceased. Right, okay. So the only way that I do that really would be if we Perfect. set up an appointment. I mean, I can answer questions about death and dying today, but I can't communicate with the deceased today. And okay. I'm sorry for that. Save that for All another right. time. I'll be back on hold, though, so you can listen in, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay. okay. Is that okay, Scott? You know what, Echo? You're what, my Scott? the host, and, and what you want is what I want for you. Oh, How's okay. That? All right. Yeah. Thank you. And Thank we're you. happy to take questions and calls, but um, it's not time for her to down to send into that etheric energy and try and pull in your long lost right now. That's not what echoes. Right. Is. Yeah. Yeah. And that is. You know. That's a. a that's probably a, a good thing to talk about too for people because, um, you know, when we see James Van Prague or John Edwards doing it on TV, oh my gosh, it looks so simple. It looks so easy. You know. I mean, I'm astounded at how how can these guys reach somebody so quickly. Um, I remember one night watching James Van Prague on Larry King, and, oh, my gosh, Scott, this lady calls in, and, yeah, I'd like you to talk to my brother. And it's like he didn't know her name. He didn't know her brother's name. And it just boggles my mind that, and, and finally James said to her, he said, okay, what is your brother's name? Because. There's a lot of brothers up there. And um, so she gave his first name, and he asked for her first name, and she gave it. And then he was able to communicate, and he went he went right into it almost. But people think that, and, and I get that a lot from people, oh, yeah, could you just check in on, you know, my sister or my brother? And, wow, heaven's a huge place. That's like... That's like somebody coming to Earth and then somebody on the other side saying, yeah, would you find my uncle when you're there? It's like, uh, yeah, sure. Can you give me his name? Can you give me a location? So yeah, Spiritual um, GPS do that. Exactly, exactly. And yeah, and also, folks, just because somebody, two people in the room both say they're doctors doesn't mean they're brain surgeons. <laughs> right, that's right. I'm the podiatrist, that's right. okay? Right, that's right. A lot of yeah. psychics do yeah. not communicate with the deceased. Uh, a lot of psychics do not 
see ghosts or do any kind of ghost busting. Um, a lot of psychics don't do specific health problems, aren't medical intuitive. So, you know, we we have become uh, specialized over the years, which, uh, you know, maybe they've always been specialized. I, I know when I was growing up with all of this, uh, just being the word psychic meant that you do all this stuff. But now... In the last few years, people have gotten very specialized about, no, like my sister, Nikki, she is a medium. This is what she loves to do, is communicate with the deceased. And she doesn't like looking at past lives or looking in people's futures. She says that that really drags, takes energy out of her. And for me, it's just the opposite. I can do past lives real easy. I can do futures pretty easy. Um, I can see ghosts. I can, um, you know, I can do those things, but to communicate with the deceased, I have to really get focused and project. It's like projecting my energy over to the other side and then calling for that person and waiting for that person to come to the gate and talk to me. So it's a different process when you're trying to communicate with the deceased. It's it's like a specific skill set that your soul is still learning in this life. That's exactly. Exactly. In your bag, right? Yes, uh, that's right. Yeah. We're going to come back and take some more calls and continue our conversation with Echo Bodine today, live, special, early edition, Positively Incorrect Radio. Now, there's also Positively Incorrect TV and some really Positively Incorrect comedy. I do some great stuff. It's called The Black Hole Report with a dude named Seymour Foxhole, but that is me. And I'd love you to check it out and join me on Facebook, on Scott Cluthy's Positively Incorrect Radio and TV on Facebook, and at the website, scottcluthy.com. You can see some of the videos on the right side, John Gray, Carmen Hara, uh, uh, Laura Wayman on, on dementia, um, listings of the radio shows, all that good stuff. Here on Blog Talk, over 450 shows and over 300,000 listeners, folks. Thanks for you, all the support out there. And uh, and the newsletter. Hit the newsletter at scottcluthy.com. You'll get my weekly newsletter showing you who's on and so on. Like some great guests coming up. Sue Frederick in Thursday. Yeah, I see your dream job. I see your dream lover and all that. Incredible. Sue Frederick is great, uh, intuitive uh, numerologist. And this is really great. Sonia Fitzpatrick, the animal communicator extraordinaire on Sirius Satellite on Stars, old friend of mine. I did her first public seminar. I had Sonia Fitzpatrick on the first time talking about Tarot before she was even doing her animal communication. She does not do radio, but she's coming on my show live on the 29th of October, 7 p.m. Central, and other great shows. Bernie Siegel last week, you name it, we do it. And we even had Echo Bodine on the show. So <laughs> I want to... Remind you of her wonderful website, echobodine.com. The new book is What Happens When We Die. We're going to take a two-minute break and remind you about some of the great people who sponsor the show, i.e. my lovely wife, Faye, and her travel agency. If you need to fly to the moon, we can get you most of the way there through Faye's Way Travel. So we'll take a two-minute break and give a breather. And uh, Echo, you stay on the line. We'll be back with more, okay? I'll be here. Thanks. We'll be right back, folks. You're listening to Scott Cluthy's Positively Incorrect Radio. Join the newsletter at scottcluthy.com and on Facebook at Scott Cluthy's Positively Incorrect TV and Radio. Want to talk to tonight's guest? Call in at 347-308-8478. We'll be right back. Ready to align your abundance, prosperity, and consciousness with 90,000 like-minded souls eager for your product, service, book, or webinar? Align yourself with the stars, with Marketing with the Stars, the number one New Age email newsletter service on planet Earth. It's easy, it's affordable, and the best part, it gets results. Find out how and read the testimony of happy customers. Go to marketingwiththestars.com. That's marketingwiththestars.com. Since 1984. Come on, jump in the water. It feels good. Booking your vacation can be easy, but more importantly, fun. There's no need to stress about booking your vacation. That's why we're here. Phase Way Travel, 1-800-783-7047. And of course, you're going on a vacation to get away from the stress, right? 
leave your world behind, and go have some fun. Whether you want to go on a cruise or explore the lands on an escorted tour, we are here to help. You're never more than a click or call away. Book your vacay with Faye. Call 1-800-783-7047 and get away today. Faceway Travel, an independent affiliate of Avoya Travel, a partner of American Express. This is Positively Incorrect Radio with your host, Scott Kluge. Call in for tonight's guest at 347-308-8478 and join the newsletter at scottkluge.com. And look for Scott Kluge's Positively Incorrect TV and radio on Facebook. Now back to Positively Incorrect with Scott Kluge. Edition of Positively Incorrect because Echo Bodine teaches every night. So we're just grateful to have her on earlier on a Tuesday with her new book, What Happens When We Die, here on Blog Talk Radio and Positively Incorrect. Echo, welcome back. Thank you, Scott. It's great to be here. Thank you also for doing this special show. Well, you're That's really sweet of you to do this. Thank you. You're welcome. (laughs) Spread that around. Uh (laughs) I will spread it around. Thank you. I'll let Billy. everybody know. You're right a great on. guy. Thank you. Uh, You're welcome. Let's talk, and we do have callers on the line. We'll get to you in a little bit here. But let's talk about the soul itself, the, so, the sojourn of the soul. And, you know, I think a lot of people, um, one of the things that's really disappointing for people is to get to the end of life and then get despondent over what they did or didn't do. But it occurs yes. to me all... All these years now, these decades of studying, reading, talking, and so on to people about all aspects of life here on planet Earth and beyond, that mm-hmm. sometimes really the soul comes in with sort of specific lessons it wants to learn. Not, yeah. yeah, you know, and so while we may be, well, I didn't become a superstar singer, well, well maybe your soul really wanted to learn how not to be jealous. Yeah. And, and you tackle yeah. that. You know? Yeah. Like, Maybe those are actually the real lessons in life that that stay with us rather than how, well, you know, who had the most toys. Yeah. Would you talk about that? You know what I mean? The long-term scope of the soul's evolution. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Sorry. (laughs) You know, five-minute version, you know. (laughs) No, you're not. Sorry. Um, Let's see. Oh, Scott. Our souls, you know, it's so interesting. People ask me all the time. What did I come here for? And they think it's oh, they think it's to discover the next penicillin or you know uh, to cure cancer. Yes. And then you talk to their soul, and the soul says, "Oh, I just need to heal. I'm just wounded in so many places." And it's like, whoa. Um, and it's hard for people to accept that 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 they need to put that much focus on themselves and uh, that. Um, that they are that wounded, uh, but, you know, then when they look at it, it's like, wow, you know, I guess I, I really am, and yeah, well, yeah, I did have a really tough childhood, and yeah, well, uh, yeah, but I'd rather not look at that stuff. I'd rather just move on, and um, it's like, you know what, maybe you can cure cancer, but first, first, um, let's let's deal with you getting healed and boy that's interesting <laughs> um being for people whole so yes yes we bring in our soul brings with us all kinds of baggage all kinds of um issues that we need to heal and uh, i think that yeah there's a lot of us that come in and we have important roles to play as far as well, just as far as anything, but we also have our own healing to do. So, um, what you know, what I what I have found for people when they say, "Well, I have no clue what it is that I need to work on," um, look at the thing that you resist the most. You know, um, like I, I don't know, is is everybody yelling at you about your drinking problem and you're refusing to listen to anyone? Is everyone? Uh, making comments about how stubborn you are and how difficult you are to get along with. Um, Is everyone 
you know, do you have a lot of problems with love relationships over and over and over and over, the same patterns? It's That's the kind of stuff we need to look at for what is our soul trying to heal? And, um, again, it's so easy on this planet to get distracted. Oh, my goodness. I mean, there's distractions everywhere, and and yet we need to block out the distractions and just sit down with ourselves and say, okay, make a list. You know, what are, take an inventory of yourself and what does need healing. Um, you know, Ethel, another thing, people, people are afraid to look at some of it because they think it's going to oh, yeah. take for, forever to heal. And, you know, Scott, really, I mean, I'm sure you know, as some stuff doesn't take that long to heal. It's just acknowledging it a lot of times that will really begin the healing process and people can move forward real quickly. Yeah. My guest, Echo Bodine, on the special Tuesday afternoon edition of Positively Incorrect uh, Radio, here with your host, Scott Cluthy. And Echo, I was wondering, you know, I think as people walking around that we see, what you're talking about is looking at the issue and not getting so caught up in the circumstances. Mhm. Yeah. The, the oh, overarching. Well, we can get, you know, <laughs> yes. Way of being. We can go around and around and around, the around tell the same brain. stories. Yeah. Right. You know, we can tell the same story over and over and over and over and uh and hold on to the emotion as much as possible. And so, you know, we can go to 10 therapists and tell them the same stories that happened to us, but we never get into the emotion of it. And it's that emotion that's inside our body turning into something physical um and that's what we have to get to is the emotion and then once we get to the emotion of it and we talk about it and maybe we cry it out or we yell it out or we write it out boom it's gone and we no longer tell that story anymore let it release it right let it transform yeah releases it yep mhm and that's what's important for people in their dying process to do is take an inventory. Um, that was one thing my mom was really conscious of. Every day she would call me and say, well, honey, you know, I made a list and you know, I still have resentments towards your father because of blah, blah, blah. But I prayed about it and I'm going to let that one go. And then she'd make a joke and say, okay, now we'll see what we come up with tomorrow. And so she was real conscious of when I leave this place, I don't want to bring any of this baggage with me. I want to be done. And, um, again, it goes back to the the notion or the disbelief that when we die, we're just done with everything here and we go on to heaven and live happily ever after. But if there is unresolved issues, no, they unfortunately sit in our soul and we can bring them, we do bring them with us into our next bring life. Bring our bags right back if, with us and start and unpack them again. Exactly. Now, we can heal. You know, there's lots of helpers on the other side. You know, I'll think of a lot of all the therapists we have on this side. Well, when they die, they don't just give up their career. They could continue on <laughs> on the other side as therapists and caregivers. So, you know, we have that option when we're on the other side. We can get healing from those people over there. But it would be nice, wouldn't it, to just, you know, when we're done, when we're taking that last breath, we have finished our issues and we can move on. It would just be great. The ideal. Karma coins. Let's see yeah. if we see if we can get uh, uh, one of our great listeners out there. has been on hold for quite a while from the 707 Area code seven oh seven. Who's this? Hi, God. Hi, Echo. This is Kathy, and Kathy? I just wanted to hi. I wanted to thank you guys so much for having this show. Oh, good. Because I'm going through a healing process, yeah. And just to realize that I need to concentrate on my own healing and yes. not quit looking for signs, quit looking for something to touch me. I it really yes. helps. Oh, oh, good. I'm so glad. Kathy? So glad. That's the deal. Yeah, Sorry, that is. Think, uh, yeah, honey, because I, the thing is, your loved one, when they have the energy, they will come by and they will give you some kind of a sign. So in the meantime, 
just let them do their thing on the other side and you do your thing, focus on you. And that's totally okay for you to do that. That's, you know, that's another thing um, a mortician friend of mine told me was that people nowadays are having really quick funerals because uh, they want to get back to work and they don't want to dwell on grief. And they think, good, once the funeral's over, then the grief is over and then they can get on with their life. And he said that, the the problem that he's finding is that the people that want to have these really quick funerals and just get on with things, that they're the ones that come back to him a year later and say, did that really happen? Did we really have a funeral? I can relate uh, to that, yeah. Yeah, Kathy, so it's, it's, it's good that you're focusing on your own grief and let yourself do it. Yeah. I will, and... Whenever they're ready, they're ready, and whenever yeah. I'm ready, I'm ready. Yeah, Kathy, yeah. nobody so. can grieve for us. Nobody can. No, they can't, I know. They can't do that. They can't do that for us. So give it to yourself because the world won't give it to you, not really the way that you want it. Yeah. It. They'll give it to you that right. version of it. Yeah. Word. Kathy, do you ever feel like, you know, when I after Mom died, I when I would go to the grocery store, I just wanted to wear a sign that said, my mom just died. Please be nice to me. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> carry my bag. I felt so vulnerable, I, I, and I just wanted yeah, the whole world do. to know so that they'd be nice to yeah. me and they wouldn't they yeah. wouldn't make me crazy in traffic. And oh yeah, I wanted to put signs everywhere. And I thought, you know, we should all wear armbands. Um, didn't they used to wear armbands when people they died? They used to wear black for a long time. Yeah, yeah that's, that's true. Yeah. true. You're right. The crepe. And you know what? Yeah. I even figured that out. Um, at my mom's funeral, I, I used to, when I, before my mom died, I used to go to funerals, and I always wore colorful clothes, you know, in celebration of the per- person's life. But when my mom died, it's like, I felt black. I felt, uh, I didn't yeah. want to be seen. I just wanted to blend into the darkness of all of it. And so I thought, oh, no wonder people wear black. You know, it made sense to me finally. So that's what I mean. I learned all these little things before mom, di- or when mom died that I had never really understood before. Intuitively came to you, didn't it? Yeah. 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 Well, so, I'm really looking forward to reading the book. Good. Good, good, good. I'm so glad. And thank, thank you guys you. so much. Thank Best. you. Okay, okay bye. Oh. Bye. And I do, do want to take another, let's see, if, uh, from a 610 area code. Let's see who this is. Hi there. Who's this? I hear you. Six one zero area code. No. Six one zero. Right. I don't have their name, so I don't have a producer here next to me today. So got it. Six, okay, we'll just put you back on hold. Maybe they're just listening. It's okay. Didn't mean to put you on the air. It's a little high pressure. Scott's talking to me. Yeah. Oh my God. No kidding. <laughs> well, let's talk a little about. Um, this process, because the new book, Echo Bodine, and do go to Echo's website, that's E-C-H-O-B-O-D-I-N-E, echobodine.com. What happens when we die? A psychic's exploration of death, heaven, and the soul's journey after death. Just released from New World Library. Excellent book. Um, but let's talk a little bit, Echo, in the, these uh, minutes we have, about what is the soul doing because one of the things you point out is, that from your understanding, there are actually points on the astrological. I'm an old astrologer, and I know this is something I hadn't studied. I'm a student of astrology for many decades. Point of exit, if you will. Um, you feel really strongly about that, that those points of exit do come around, and, and we can sort of sometimes, as we move along, make choices about whether we leave or not. And if that's the case, then, if that's the case, what is the soul doing in preparation of planning to make an exit? That's a good question. That's a very good question. Um, well, I have, you know, when my astrologer friends first told me about exit points, I thought, no way. It didn't make sense to me. I couldn't comprehend it mentally. I just figured, you know, when you die, you're supposed to die, and that's it. Boom, you're out of here. Um, but then I started, hmm, like, becoming really aware of exit points. And, um, you know, it's interesting because a lot of times the soul, if they've got an exit point coming up, they will be sleeping a lot. Um, They will be uh, feeling more and more detached from their own life. And 
what they're doing when they're sleeping a lot is their soul the soul is going out from the body and it is meeting with others on the elder uh, the elders on the other side it's meeting with it, the, their spirit guides um not their deceased loved ones because their deceased loved ones might try to encourage them to come back home or you know to come to heaven um but they are talking to a committee on the other side of okay what would be the pros of me dying now what would be the cons of dying now and the committee is is very uh, emotionally detached they're very almost business like about it um well and it's kind of like well if you graduate now with just uh you know um uh a masters um you know you'll you will have accomplished this much but you could go on to get your phd kind of thing and um so the soul might say you know what um yeah i think i'll stick it out for a few more years uh and then they stop the whole exit possible exit stops they stop sleeping all the time they start feeling connected to their life again they start feeling renewed again they start getting ideas as to what they can accomplish now on the next um leg of their life and um and then when the next exit point comes up again they go through that same thing uh meeting with the elders and and at that point they might say okay i'm ready to go now for all of us there is a final exit point where there are no more meetings and what i've seen is in readings is that in some people's lives they only have one exit point and um uh, it's usually the older souls that have the choices whereas the younger souls don't so um that's what i found scott is a lot of sleeping a lot of kind of detaching from that life and then um mm, you know they get they might get very very sick uh their soul might stay out of the body for many days they might be in a coma situation it's it's very interesting you know the soul has many different ways of shutting the body down while it goes out and makes its decisions so it's usually so things like that yeah thank you my guest echo bodeen here on the special early edition of positively incorrect on this tuesday evening by the way, join me Thursday, 7 Central, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Sue Fredericks here. Numero uno with numerology and intuitive sensibility, Sue Frederick. I see your dream lover. I see your dream job, all that. Those are all her books, all that. And she's got the whole school where she teaches people. Uh, Sonia Fitzpatrick is coming up live. Yes, the animal communicator from Sirius Satellite. Old friend of mine. Going to be live, doesn't do radio, but she's doing the show. I'm so grateful. Emma, her daughter, set this up. We'll be talking about her new book, and that is on October 29th. So you can find this all out by getting my newsletter. Go to scottcluthy.com, look for the newsletter tab, hit that. You can join me on Facebook and join the newsletter on the same page, and I'd love for you to do that and share it with your friends and family so we can build the audience for Positively Incorrect even beyond the 300,000 listeners now on Blog Talk Radio. Check out the video and all that. Check out Echo Bodine's website at echobodine.com, the new book, What Happens When We Die, a psychic exploration of death, heaven, and the soul's journey after death. And I want to talk about something that's very uh, very heavy around all this stuff right now, but it needs to be spoken about because okay. too many young people are choosing this and too many fanatics choose this, and it's called suicide. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Well, um suicide is it's a tough choice for many many people and um the, the main re, the main message that I would like to get to people yeah. that are contemplating suicide is that you take that pain with you. And you know, if the pain is about the bill collectors calling all the time, you don't take that pain with you because obviously the bills are going to stop and there's not going to be anybody calling you in heaven for money. That part of it stops. But the depression that you might be feeling, the helplessness, hopelessness, that those are feelings in your soul. 
And what you want to do is you want to fight hard for yourself to get that hope back, that hopefulness, um, get it back before you decide to take your own life. And people say to me, um, I've done everything I can. No, you have not done everything you can. People say, well, it costs money to get help. Yep, it does. Um, But it is so worth it because this is pain in your own soul that you are going to take with you to the other side. And um, it, it. what I've seen with suicide people is they feel very frustrated when they realize, you know, they come out of their body, the body's been destroyed, and they realize, oh, my gosh, I'm still depressed. And they want to get back in that body. But the body has been, uh, you know, many times it's already been cremated. Uh, and they can't get back in. And so there's a sense of uh, real sadness of what have I done, what have I done. Now, the other thing about suicide is that religion teaches us that we can't get into heaven until our, our allotted time, and that is not true. Um, God does not stand at the pearly gates and say, sorry, you're not supposed to come in until September, and it's only July. You know, uh, it's like you're going to have to wait out there in the darkness. That's not at all how this goes. I don't care what any psychic ever tells you. Um, I have seen many people that have committed suicide, and they go to the light. They There are angels that will come and assist them to the light. Uh, deceased relatives come and say, come on, you can come home. Um, so that is not true that they're just going to hang in limbo and uh, and wait until someone allows them to come in. That's just more of that misguided information from religion. Yeah. Um, yeah. Echo, it's so great to have you on the show today. We have about two minutes left. I'd like you to share what you hope people will gather from your new book. What happens when we die from Echo Bodine? What I hope is that people have a much better understanding of it for themselves when they die and also when their loved ones are dying, just how to handle it better, how to talk about it with people. Um, That's one thing our society doesn't like to do is talk about death, and so we pretend it's not happening, but it's happening around us all the time. And so I definitely recommend getting a copy of the book. Um, It's something we're all going to do, and our loved ones are all going to do it. And so, you know, familiarize yourself with the whole process of dying, death and dying, and don't make it such a scary thing anymore. Make it something that you can talk about with your loved ones when it's your time and when it's their time. Mm-hmm. What are we going to find on, over at the website, echobodine.com? Oh, sweetie pie. Oh, gosh, what are you going to find? You know, I have online psychic development classes. I've got a new one coming up very soon, um, so they can find out about that. Um, just when I start new classes, it's, you know, it's a fun it's a fun website, and I highly recommend people going there or um, on Facebook, it's Echo Lee Bodine, although we can't be friends on that one because my friend list is full. So you need to go to Echo Bodine fan page, and we can become friends there. And, you know, I just I keep people updated on what's going on. It's good. It's fun. It's I, I enjoy it. It's a nice way to be connected with people. Echo, thank you so much for joining me today. Scott, thank you for having me. Bless your heart. Yeah. Okay, can Thank I give you, you a call after the show? Talk to you soon. Okay. I know you're okay. Well, bless you. All right. All right, folks, join me Thursday night, 7 o'clock, when Sue Fredericks, my guest, the 29th, Sonia Fitzpatrick live, the animal communicator extraordinaire. And go to the website, scottcluthy.com. Join my newsletter. Join me on Facebook. I need to fill up my friends list, believe me. Take care. Be kind. Have a great evening, everybody. Thanks for listening to Positively Incorrect. You've been listening to Positively Incorrect with your host Scott Clusey on Blog Talk Radio. All theme music provided courtesy of Mark May. Check out markmay.com. And thanks for listening to Positively Incorrect with your host Scott Clusey on Blog Talk Radio. Positively.